The show floor at CES 2024 is open, and people have been racking up their steps, canvassing Las Vegas' vast convention centers and hotel ballrooms to see all the latest and weirdest tech products. The Engadget team has been getting our cardio in, braving both vehicular and human traffic to get face and hand time, another body part time, with the most intriguing demos here, while companies haven't stopped holding press conferences and announcing new items. If you don't have time to parse through every individual headline, or you're here in Vegas and want to know where to go, here's a recap of the biggest news out of CES 2024's second day. One of the biggest booths at the show is, as always, Google, and the company also had a fair amount of news to share. In keeping with the same theme it's been doing the last few years of Better Together, Google shared updates to its inner device software like FastPair and announced it's working with Samsung to integrate and rename its nearby share feature to QuickShare, which is the current name of Samsung's version of the same thing. This should hopefully simplify things for Android users and give them a more cohesive alternative to Apple's AirDrop. Now, details were pretty scarce on whether there are changes coming to Samsung users, but those who have nearby share should see a new icon pretty soon. Google also added support for people to Chromecast TikTok videos to compatible TVs and screens, and it's bringing its apps to some Ford, Nissan, and Lincoln vehicles later this year. Android Auto will also be able to share your electric vehicle's battery levels to Google Maps, so it can factor in recharge stations, charge times, and stops into your routes. Now, speaking of EVs, Honda also debuted new EV concepts called the Saloon and the Space Hub. The Saloon is a sedan with an aerodynamic design and it rides low to the ground, while the Space Hub is a minivan that is a little boxier and its seats has its passengers facing each other. Honda said it will develop a model based on the Saloon concept car for the North American markets in 2026, although there's no word yet on the Space Hub. In other transportation news, Hyundai brought an updated version of its SA2 Air Taxi to the show. The SA2 is an electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle that has a cruising speed of 120 miles per hour when it reaches an altitude of 1500 feet. It's designed to fly short trips between 25 to 40 miles, and the company envisions it as an everyday transportation solution for urban areas. We also got more smart home news from companies other than Google, including Amazon, which said it will adopt the Matter standard for casting, but it won't support Chromecast or Apple's AirPlay. How nice! We also saw new face scanning and palm reading door locks, smart outdoor lights by Nanoleaf, and a new Weber Searwood smart grill that's both cheaper and more versatile. There has been a smattering of mobile news, including the Clix iPhone keyboard case and a surprising, adorable device called the Rabbit R1. It's pitched as an AI-powered assistant in what's basically a cute, squarish walkie-talkie co-designed by Teenage Engineering. It has a tiny 2.8-inch touchscreen, an analog scroll wheel, two mics, a speaker, and a 360-degree camera you can spin to face toward you or through the back of the handset. You're supposed to talk to the Rabbit AI by pushing down a button, like a walkie-talkie, and ask it to do anything like booking an Uber or looking for a recipe tailored to your specific list of ingredients. There's been a lot more at the show, including some weird stuff, but I wanted to take some time to shout out a bunch of intriguing accessibility products. We saw the OrCam Hear system that's designed to help people with hearing loss isolate the voices of certain speakers in noisy environments. There's also the Gyro Glove, which is a hand stabilizing glove for people with hand tremors, as well as the Mouth Pad, which lets you control your phone, tablet, or laptop by using your tongue. We also saw an update to the audio radar system that provides visual cues for gamers who are hard of hearing to see where sounds are coming from and what type of sounds they might be. It's very heartening to see all this development in assistive technology at CES, especially when the industry often spends so much time and money on less worthy endeavors. We're nearing the end of the show, and as we get ready to do our final sweeps at the show floor, the Engadget team is also looking back and contemplating the best things we saw at CES 2024. We'll be putting together our Best of CES awards list soon, so make sure you come back and see what we decided were the winners of the show. Meanwhile, because you've come back and watched our video over and over again, hopefully, as a special treat for you, I've written a poem to describe my experience here at CES. 
I wrote this at 12.30 midnight last night uh, after a long day of hard work and hard drinking. Every day over here has felt like a year. The end seems so far, but also so near. Constant work to do and missing out to fear. Gadgets and gambles abound and nothing to cheer. If you loved it, hit me up on threads. Uh, we will talk more about poetry. And even if you didn't like it, please come back to engadget.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the best news and bad poetry out of CES 2024.